So you'll find this um, link to today. I have the videos and the PowerPoints as materials. Once I posted them, I couldn't um, add this. So now you have a separate one for this. So we'll just take a handful of minutes. We're gonna make a first guess, then we're gonna lecture, and then we're gonna come back to it and make any corrections we need to make. Okay, take a break from that. We're gonna get some more knowledge. I can see um, some of us are maybe confused about which is TNR, tRNA and which is rRNA. Um, which is an amino acid, which is a protein, which is a codon, which is an anticodon. So we're going to go through our um, lecture now. We're going to come back to this and we're going to see if we can update it, okay? So it's kind of like what we knew before and what we know after. You guys ready to go? Yeah. So this week um, I did put a Weizerman worksheet in. Um, I figure I might take up most of this class period, so I didn't want to make it something that was due today. So, um, so you have a, that worksheet that is due. AP Daily videos are just suggestions. Um, and then I did post a review. Oops, I put 15. It's chapter 12. And actually, the worksheet probably says review chapter 13 and 14, because our last book, this was 13, 14, and I didn't think to fix that. So um, this should be chapter 12 that I gave you. And then next week we're going to hit, we're going to assess this um, and then we're going to hit gene regulation. Okay. So um, I think Monday you have your afternoon classes and then Tuesday you have your morning classes. I'll talk more about the testing tomorrow. Um, maybe we do it Monday. We don't want to test on our first day back. So um, so that might be the game plan. The other game plan would be Wednesday. So let's look at that and make a decision. Um, so today we're talking about translation. So picking up this PowerPoint here, this image is similar. I should have given you, um, I didn't know I was gonna give you that worksheet at first. I, I assumed as much. Um, so this is similar to the graphic that you had, only the graphic you had had a lot more details. So remember, this is the central dogma. DNA codes for RNA, RNA codes for proteins or codes for genes. Genes create proteins. However you want to look at that, it's the flow of genetic information when they say the central dogma. Okay, so we've already transcribed, we've made DNA into a single-stranded RNA that uses uracil instead of thymine that uses um, ribose instead of deoxyribose. Replication occurred in the cytoplasm, so does, um, I'm sorry, replication occurs in the nucleus, so did transcription. So now we're moving out of the nucleus. The mRNA that we made, um, we processed it. Remember, we put a poly A tail on one end and we put a um, five prime cap on the other end. And then that goes out into the cytoplasm where it's looking for the ribosome. So in um, the ribosome, we are going to convert that mRNA into actual proteins. So the message is read every three letters. So three letters is a codon. That should seem very similar, similar from um, biology. So we call that a triplet because it's three bases, as in the nucleotides the three nitrogenous bases is what it's referring to. So a triplet codon, and each codon codes for a specific amino acid. So there's 20 different amino acids, but there's 64 different codons. So that means more than one codon would code for the same amino acid. And you guys experienced that last week when you did your case study. Remember you made a silent mutation, and that was silent because even though you changed the DNA or that you changed the nitrogenous base order, the codon changed, but you still made the same amino acid because more than one codon codes for an amino acid. So this is the protein structure of the ribosome. It comes in two subunits. At the beginning of the year, we compared eukaryotes and prokaryotes. 
and the fact that we have different sized subunits. That's one of the difference between us. That was also one of your um, points of evidence for endosymbiosis. The fact that the um, subunits of mitochondria and of um, chloroplasts were the same as the subunits um, of a of a, um, a prokaryote. All right, so um, the whole purpose of the ribosome is to act like an enzyme. And remember, enzymes hold two things together in the proper um, positioning so that they can make reactions. So it's basically going to hold a tRNA, transfer RNA, in the proper position with an mRNA for amino acids to bind. Okay, so the ribosome has three, three positions. Here is the three positions. You have the A site, which is the active site, the P site, which is the promoter site, and the E site, which is the exit site. So the promoter site, that's this first one right here, okay? Usually the mRNA codon, AUG, that's your start codon, that's methionine. Every gene begins with AUG. So the methionine will bind in the A position. And at that point, that position is full. So every other amino acid will come in here at the, I'm sorry if I called this the A site. This is your P site. It binds at the P site, and then every other one will come in at the A site. So I consider this the active site. Okay, so new ones are coming in. They'll bind with the growing stamp strand, and eventually um, the ribosome moves like a typewriter, one position at a time. So the mRNA isn't changing. The ribosome is moving down. So when this moves one position, your methionine codon will now be in the exit site. That is where it will leave the ribosome. Okay, so you have three sites, um, that P for promoter or polypeptide, because the growing polypeptide will be here, the A for the active site, and the E site for the exit site. Okay, here's your tRNA, that clover leaf that we refer to. It has three letters that matches the codon, so it's the anti-codon, so it's the opposite. So if this this one is U, G, G, so what binds to U? A, because remember, U replaced T. G binds to C, and G binds to C, okay? So this is the anti-codon. This makes sure that it brings the proper amino acids, so the clover leaf at the very end of that will be a single amino acid. So each tRNA contains the anticodon, which is complementary, meaning it will only bind in one position um, to the mRNA. And then that carries the specific um, amino acid. We talked about transcription happening in three stages, and I said translation will happen in the same, like the same three names. So initiation, it begins, elongation, self-explanatory, it's longer, and termination, again, it's going to be the end point. Okay, so this is um, going to take you through those steps. At the initiation here, your AUG methionine, your AUG will, will bind with the small subunit, which initiates the formation of the entire ribosome. So we can see the large ribosomal subunit connecting with the small ribosomal subunit here. The tRNA attaches at this site, okay? The AUG binds with UAC. So the tRNA comes into this position and that is the beginning, okay? So now every new position or every new tRNA will come in at the A site and then the um, ribosome shifts one position. Okay, so the ribosome shifts, and um, now the methionine will go into the E, and the 309 will go into the P. So you start with the P site, and then every new one comes in at A, and then it shifts one position, so A goes to P, which leaves the A site open, so the next one can come in. When they do that, I'm going to go back a site. When they do that, it puts the amino acids 
in proper position to make a polypeptide chain or to make a peptide bond, right? So you're going to form a bond here. Um, and then when the ribosome shifts one more position, that initial tRNA will now be sitting in the exit site. Notice it's polypeptide chain growing. The peptide bond is in between the amino acids. So the amino acid has shifted to the P position and nothing is holding this tRNA in at the exit site anymore. And so that's why it will be no longer bound to the mRNA and it will be released. So that's the exit site. So eventually you get to a stop codon. There are three different stop codons. UGA is one of the examples. Remember when I say stop codon or say codon at all, I'm talking about the mRNA code. Okay, so UGA is one of your three stop codons. It brings in a tRNA that does not have a amino acid. No amino acid is bound to these. It does have um, some release factors. So if this amino acid no longer has, I'm sorry, if this tRNA no longer has an amino acid, it can't form a bond with the growing polypeptide chain. So when this gets into the exit site and is releasing the tRNA, the polypeptide chain is released as well because there's no bond that's holding it to the final tRNA. So at that point, the ribosomal subunit falls apart and the proteins all um, will separate. Now, I'm just clicking that one because I didn't click it this morning. I clicked the other ones. Okay, I'm going to skip that for now. Um, so here's a video showing you, like, because I like animations, it shows you what's actually happening. The genetic information stored in DNA is transcribed into messenger RNA and then translated into protein. Translation begins when messenger RNA binds to the ribosome. The initial transfer RNA occupies the P site on the ribosome. Subsequent transfer RNAs with bound amino acids first enter the ribosome at the A site. The complementary matching of three nucleotides on the transfer RNA, called the anticodon, and three nucleotides on the messenger RNA, called the codon, ensures the correct sequence of amino acids. The messenger RNA passes along the ribosome in short spurts of three nucleotides at a time. As this occurs, the initial transfer RNA is moved to the E site and its amino acid is transferred to the second amino acid at the P site. At the same time, a new codon is presented at the A site. The initiating transfer RNA, which now no longer carries an amino acid, leaves the E site and the next transfer RNA with a complementary anticodon enters the A site. Each time a new codon sequence moves into the A site, a new transfer RNA brings in an amino acid. The old transfer RNA paired with the previous codon is passed to the P site and then to the E site as the amino acid it carried is transferred to the growing amino acid chain. As the ribosome proceeds down the messenger RNA, a stop codon is finally encountered. At this point, the ribosomal complex falls apart and the protein is released into the cell. I did put in a couple other links in the Google Classroom, um, oops, sorry, for videos of animations. Um, they, this one was a little bit shorter and it just zeroed in on the translation. The other ones are still like four minutes or less, um, but they kind of include what's happening beforehand as well. So you've made a protein. We know that all we've made so far actually is the um, primary sequence, right? The polypeptide chain. So then you have your secondary structure where it gets either the helix or the beta pleat, and that's due to the um, hydrogen bonding of nearby amino acids. Tertiary um, happens when you have far away um, amino acids attracted due to hydrophobic interactions. 
um, ionic bonding, soft hydro bonding. And then remember, you have that chaperone protein that helps form the final um, quaternary structure where it gains its final um, shape and therefore is able to do its final function. So the different functions it might do, it might be a secretion. So it's released. Secretions are released. Excretions are like waste. Secretion is being used. So perhaps it's um, packaged up in that um, Golgi apparatus into a vesicle, and then that vesicle takes it to the surface, and then it is released. Perhaps it's a hormone. Um, it may be used in the nucleus. We have lots of proteins used during um, mitosis, for example. Used in the mitochondria, we have lots of protein pumps and electron uh, proteins that transfer the electrons. The chloroplast, same thing, cell membrane. We have lots of um, membrane proteins. You have um, receptor proteins that receive signals like from hormones or neurotransmitters. You have um, signal proteins, you have um, pumps and transfer proteins that move molecules across the membrane, all kinds of proteins. Marker proteins that identify the cell as to what type of cell it is. Um, and then they might go out to the cytoplasm. You have secondary messengers in the cytoplasm. You have enzymes in the cytoplasm. There's lots and lots of things, okay? Um, so some differences here, prokaryotes. Um, so we're, the DNA is actually in the cytoplasm rather than the nucleus, right? The DNA is in a circular single chromosome rather than the eukaryote, which is long, linear, and multi. Um, the prokaryote is a naked DNA. One of the videos you'll see what I mean by DNA wound on histone proteins, um, one of those two that I added. And prokaryotes don't have an, an, any of those introns, those pieces of non-coding information. So when you read a prokaryote gene, it's you don't have to process that mRNA, whereas in the eukaryote you do. You have to ex excise those introns so that you're only reading the exons. Okay, this is a picture of um, prokaryotes. Translation happens a little bit differently because um, the this is your DNA and your transcription is happening and translation connects directly to the mRNA as it is being transcribed. So as the mRNA is forming, the ribosomes attach to that mRNA and um, directly produce the polypeptide chain from that. So that's kind of cool. Um, mutations. So I'm going to take a break there. We're going to talk about mutations tomorrow. Um, I want to revisit our worksheets. So our um, worksheet here. So take a minute, see if there's any changes you want to make on that. So I'm going to give you a handful of minutes. So question in the chat, um, is the codon complementary to the DNA sequence and anticodon would be the same? aside from your cell, perfect, yes. So um, the codon is complementary to the template strand of DNA, which means that the tRNA then is that coding, or that means that the, it's the same as the coding strand anyways. Um, so tRNA will be the same as the DNA other than if, it, if DNA was CCT, it would be CTU. Good, good, good eye. So DNA, mRNA, the codon, sometimes it's, it's tricky to think like what the person who wrote the worksheet is thinking, um, but using a bracket um, usually would indicate this particular area and, and this, um, she used three arrows, meaning these three letters. So I knew that this was mRNA leaving the nucleus, which made that the codon. I follow that same strand and I can see it over here as well. Okay, um, tRNA, because it was referring to the structure itself, down here it's pointing at what those three bases, right? So that's the anticodon. And then this one is pointing at the little circle attached to the tRNA. tRNA carries amino acids. So that individual circle is an amino acid. This, it would be better to call it a polypeptide. It's many amino acids bound together. I wouldn't call it an entire protein, but the worksheet called it a protein. Um, and then you have your 
ribosome, that would be the large subunit. So this one was um, the small subunit here, right? And the large subunit up here. Bracket indicating just these three letters, codon. The mRNA could have been confusing because it was pointing at one of those three as well. So this whole strand is the mRNA. These funny looking things, um, that's gonna be your tRNA. They're carrying amino acids, right? And at the bottom, they have their T, the anticodon. So the anticodon that is complementary. Individual amino acids go together to again, make a polypeptide chain. That would have been the better term. And finally, um, role of mRNA is to carry the DNA genetic code out into the cytoplasm to the ribosome. So it carries the message. The role of tRNA is simply to carry the amino acid to the proper location. How does the ribosome know the sequence of amino acids? Because of the messenger RNA, right? Every three letters is a codon. What happens if the sequence is changed? Sometimes an effect, sometimes no effect. That's tomorrow. So um, sometimes you have no effect, it's called a silent mutation, and other times the amino acid will code for a different amino acid, I'm sorry, the um, codon will code for a different amino acid, and therefore you'll have possibly a different structure. Where does transcription take place? The nucleus. Translation, cytoplasm. The difference between the codon and the anticodon, they're complementary. The codon codes for the amino acid, the anti carries the amino acid, it doesn't code for it. Okay, so you read a code. It wouldn't make sense to read an anticode. Um, so they are complementary, meaning they're going to have the opposite um, nucleotides. The relationship between proteins and genes. Genes carry the information for proteins. Genes code for proteins. Proteins create your phenotypes. Proteins are expressed. You can throw in the chat if you have any questions or you want me to go back to a slide. You can also shout out loud. If there are no more questions, just a reminder, um, tomorrow we're gonna do the mutation lecture. This week, um, Wiser Mean Worksheet is being turned in. You have, I think it's Thursday afternoon. Um, you have AP Daily videos. Those are for your own good. Pick the ones that you feel you really need. Um, review chapter 12, the worksheet will say 13 and 14 because I forgot to change it. Um, and next week we're gonna test. It will either be Monday or Wednesday. I gotta figure that out yet. And we'll start gene regulation, which is super fun. What questions do you have? 